This is the Eye for an Eye channel. Welcome to today's show. It's important to note that all of the things that they've done over the last few years are not going to waste. They've been conditioning people. And again, as this next wave is approaching, this next, next wave of shutdowns, lockdowns, all of this type of stuff, it ties into their virtual world agenda. This virtual reality we constantly hear them talking about, right? We've all talked about, you've heard me talk about the metaverse, what it's really about. I'm sure a lot of you, if you actually sit and think about it, pre the outbreak, right? How often would you ever hear of people getting on Zoom calls or calls where they're talking to you where you could see their face, right? You usually would just be on the phone with somebody, if anything, right? People have been conditioned over the last couple of years to do everything virtually where they're literally going, well, we could just Zoom call. We don't need to meet up with each other because it's the same thing. I can see you that way, right? So relatives and people are now before that would never have jumped on a video call. They would never have the need to, but they were locked down for so long. They got used to all that stuff. Tech, getting used to technology, allowing technology to have more control over your life. That's part of this agenda because part of the carbon footprint and the lockdowns that are coming is to be living in a virtual world, right? We know colleges, we know that high schools, even elementary schools are now giving out virtual reality sets to kids, right? And this is a blurring of the lines. This is blurring of reality and what is not reality. This is preparing people to upload their consciousness. This has all been shown to us before with predictive programming. The virtual world is upon us. These lockdowns and shutdowns, people are going to be fine being prisoners in their own home because they're going to have virtual headsets, virtual contact lenses, and they're going to be doing all these things. Like, you don't need to go to Hawaii. Just do it virtually. It's like the same thing. You, can, you don't need to be married or ever date somebody again. You could virtually do all these things. These will be things that are po absolute poison to your soul, to your mind, more so than anything. It'll create a virtual prison in your mind. You will be in virtual hell, like all of the predictive programming we've seen with movies like The Cell or, you know, with uh, J-Lo, etc. These videos, these movies, these shows, and I'm about to show you a compilation of these things that have shown us about living in a virtual world. And you can see the common themes. The Earth's surface is destroyed. That's what they're planning on doing with weather manipulation. It's destroying everything. You see what's going on in Libya. You see what's been going on in Maui. We've all seen it, whether it's direct energy weapon or HARP or CERN with earthquakes, etc., Okay, they're destroying the air service. They're going to get people to imprison themselves in their home with the carbon footprint, saying that, well, you know, the whole purpose of everything that's happening is because of climate change, and people have to stay inside because their carbon emissions are making it worse and worse and worse. But don't worry, as you're imprisoning your home, you can live in the virtual hell that we've created, a non-realistic world where people will want to turn to virtual reality because the world around them is just getting worse and worse. That's part of the programming, right? Everybody's grown cold of one another. Everybody hates the world the way it is, Okay. Now, these people are lovers of the world, but they don't like what they're seeing and what people are distant from one another, so to speak. And these narcissists will want to live in these virtual hell holes, these virtual prisons, because they'll be able to do all these things that they want to do and they'll be able to do it. It'll be free. And what's the difference? I'm able to go and buy a, uh, you know, a, a Rolls Royce in the virtual world with my virtual dollars. I mean, it's going to be utter insanity. But here's the predictive programming over the years with the virtual prison and how they prepare people for what's coming right now. My name's Wade Watts. My dad picked that name because it sounded like a superhero's alter ego. Nowhere. Except the Oasis. A whole virtual universe. People come to the Oasis for all the things they can do. But they stay because of all the things they can be. This is your wake-up call. The year is 2021. It is no longer safe to transmit information. Phones, computers, and satellites are all vulnerable. Your storage capacity? I can carry nearly 80 gigs of data in my head. Input the data into the brain of a human courier. What are you doing? Making a long-distance phone call. Those who control the information control the world. He's the epitome of evil. And he's on the prowl in the third dimension. It's Wario. The diabolical one has gone 3D, where evil runs deep and danger comes out of nowhere in the most incredible adventure ever seen on Virtual Boy. It's Wario Land, a 3D game for a 3D world. From the imagination 
comes the story of a man. Yo, come on, boy, let's go. Grass is waiting for you. With the mind of a child. Yeah, Cybo Man, he came to see me. Cybo Man, comics, right? Yeah, Cybo Man. <laughs> and a doctor. Virtual reality holds a key to the evolution of the human mind. With a vision of the future. I have a game in my house that you might like to play. Would you like that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> really bad. I have different games. I even have one that could help make you smarter. Now, ah! Job Smith is about to enter the world of virtual reality. Ah, it's gonna hit no, me! No, no, Job, just relax. It's gonna be like being up there with the stars, Job. They're going to another planet. His mind is like a clean, hungry sponge. Ah! I just graduated to the next level, Job. <laughs> You're not the one, old man. Oh, you've certainly changed. I don't know how you did it, but I approve. I absorbed Latin yesterday in less than two hours. Joe, where are you? Joe! A world where the normal course of events can suddenly turn inside out. You realize, Dr. Angelo, that my intelligence has surpassed yours. The imaginary becomes real. Trying to get inside my head, Joe. You can't hide anything from me, Dr. Angelo. And reality... We have no idea what he's gonna do. ...is all in your mind. This is the headquarters in San Francisco of a company called ODG. It's here it manufactures an AR headset called the R7. At the moment, this augmented reality device is primarily a tool for the workplace. The glasses are a self-contained, head-worn computer running a version of the Android operating system. But while lots of industries recognise the potential of AR, the technology has had difficulty gaining traction with mainstream consumers. That was until earlier this summer, when a lot of people went pocket monster mad. What Pokemon Go and Snapchat have shown is that the consumer is ready for augmented reality. We just have to present the right platform for them. Holding a phone or mobile device makes your hand tired and you, you do it once in a while and then it loses its charm. With an augmented reality glass, it, it immerses you, it blurs your reality with the digital world. So once a platform exists, the people will adopt it. One of the developers here thought, why not adapt Pokemon Go, the game designed to work on smartphones, for this headset? After about an hour of fiddling around with the code, that's exactly what he managed. And it's exactly what I can see right now. Where are you? Sneaky, sneaky Pokemon, where are you? There you are. Got my ball. That's it. Looking for Pokemon inside an office is okay, but the real test of this bit of kit is to take it outside. The new water-resistant Galaxy S7 Edge. Drink us some tea. Lil Wayne fighting some robots in outer space. Lil Wayne sitting on the couch. I'm gonna have to call you back. I'm shooting a commercial. Lil Wayne dealing with annoying friends all the time. Lil Wayne in the canoe with Wesley Snipes. Oh, hey, Wesley Snipes. I was just in the canoe with you. Cool. Lil Wayne talking to Wesley Snipes. Lil Wayne surfing in Thailand with Wesley Snipes. Very cool. The new virtual reality powered Galaxy S7 Edge. Oh, this is amazing. Right, Lil Wayne? Shh. I can't talk right now, Wesley Snipes. I'm delivering this baby elephant. Our exhibitors are letting you float in outer space, drive a race car, and even fly over mountains. We see so many smiles at VRLA. People have so much fun because as far as our brains are concerned, 
virtual reality is real. It's just not physical. And that's an important distinction I learned from Dr. Todd Richmond, director of advanced prototype development at USC's Institute for Creative Technology. VR experiences reinforce a long-held idea about the nature of consciousness, that our brains are really good inference machines that construct reality from multiple streams of information. So this virtual prison that we see around us is continuing to get normalized. Everybody got a dose of a new world during the outbreak, not just with everything going on with the restrictions, etc. They were telling everybody to do everything virtual. Think about how crazy that is. If I told you 15, 10 years ago that people would be working from home, that was never a thing. People would be like, no way, that doesn't count. You're working from home. We need, you can't work from home. That's pretty much, you're taking the day off. You're going to be home all day. Now people have been desensitized, working from home. All these things are going to happen. You're going to be working from home. Everything is going to be like I showed you in the line. Remember when I showed you the line, how the Saudi Arabia prison, that's what this, our society is going to look like where your home is your office, where you're inside of this small space, you're crammed in, and then throw on your virtual headsets and you don't need to leave your home. That's how it'll be marketed. We don't need to go anywhere. It's the same thing. It's just as fun. And people are like, oh, they'll never convince people of that. Oh no, they're convincing people that kids should be castrating themselves. They're convincing people that men can have babies. Okay, they'll be able to convince people that living in a virtual reality will be more pleasant than living in what we're living in now. And that they can have all these things that they could never have and go to these places they could never afford to go. Also part of what they're doing, obviously with all this chaos with the airlines, with travel, the prices of everything. This is done by design. This is strategically done. So what you saw in a lot of those clips, right, was empowerment through the virtual world, like the lawnmower man. But you also saw things like Ready Player One, which is exact, of course, Steven Spielberg, right? Steven Spielberg, one of these puppets who has been using predictive programming for decades, this guy's as sick and demented as they get, right? Him, Stephen King, these guys have constantly promoted, being promoted. And we're supposed to believe they're promoted because they're so talented. They're promoted because they know what the script is. They're on the inside. They're in the fellow brotherhood, the fellowship, okay? So they put this stuff out there so for people to see. And what does it do? It subconsciously desensitizes people and conditions people for this reality. King has done it in so many films. Uh, Spielberg has done it in so many films, Right? So in that, you see what? You see a destroyed earth. You see chaos and people are literally living in containers. <laughs> you know, they're living in these storage containers and they're fine. They're like, this is great because inside of the metaverse, I'm empowered. I could do this in there. I could be a superhero inside of there, right? All of this conditioning ties into all of the things that are going on. The superhero conditioning, it has to do with magic, it has to do empowerment, it has to do with the meta, or just let's just call it the virtual hell, the virtual prison. Right, so in that trailer, you saw what? You saw the Earth's surface destroyed, but don't worry, inside of there, inside of the metaverse, everything's fine. I mean, Blade Runner, how many movies have you seen? It's total recall, right? All of this, your consciousness, oh, everything is wonderful inside of here, and it ends up being a virtual trap, a virtual prison that you can never escape from. So with the next wave that is coming now, more people are going to just be able to accept it than did the first time. They know that. Now, there's going to people like us who are just in an uproar about it and have been from the beginning. But they know the majority of society are just going to be like, well, we went through it once already. I guess it's not a big deal. The world didn't come to an end. We'll get back to normal again. It's not so much the sacrifice to just stay home all the time and do this and do that. And next thing you know, it's their new life. And that's what we've seen since the after the outbreak, right? People haven't been able to get back to their life. People aren't dating as much. One on one. They've tied that in with politics and how divided people are, right? People are not dating. People are not procreating, right? Nobody's having kids. This all ties into deep pop, right? All these agendas are happening at once. And the virtual prison, the virtual hell ties into exactly what they have planned. So we're going to see more of this, right? We're going to see more people working from home. We're going to see people schooled from home. And they're going to say, well, unlike the first time, we're going to make sure that these kids are prepared, okay? And we're going to get them in the virtual thing. And then they're going to promote it as, oh, it's worked and it's helped the mental health of these kids now that we've done it this way. If they had the virtual stuff ready for the outbreak the first time, people would have been more suspicious. So this time around, they're going to say, well, we're, you know, we're going to mail, Meta's going to mail you virtual headsets and all kids in public schools will be able to do schooling through there and they'll learn more than they ever learned. They're smarter than ever too. So we need to restrict the age limits because we've seen this technology has really advanced their brain. So we should let five-year-olds date 40-year-olds now. I mean, it's going to be utter chaos. And I know it sounds like I'm, you know, I'm saying things and you're like, ah, that's a little much. It's a little, it's not. Trust me, it's not. 
the conditioning has been put in place. The desensitizing is in place. And when it's in place, they can keep ramping up more and more and more. And people just accept it more and more and more. That's the frightening part about it. A reminder, if you haven't joined UprisingRevival.com, please consider doing so now. At the very least, go over there, click free videos, and submit your email. You'll get email notifications of my new videos here on YouTube. You'll get email notifications of where I'm uploading in the event that the channel is gone. And you'll also be able to get uploads on what I'm uploading and what's going on on the website. And as well, it's a way for us to stay in contact with each other if things hit the fan. You know, say, I mean, I don't think I, the internet will be working, but say hypothetically it comes back on. I'll be able to do a mass email blast to many people out there who have submitted and give them an idea of what's going on or what I think is going on because I'm not a know-it-all. But what I think is going on and maybe something that we could do to network with each other. So definitely check out the website. I highly recommend you join the website. It's 2 dollars a month. It's troll-free. It keeps the website running smoothly. It's the price of a bottle of water, half the price of gas these days for a month's worth of content. The forum itself, you could spend hours in the forum going through things that people are posting and sharing. You could share anything you want as far as what's going on. You could share stuff going on in your stores that you're seeing. I love when people post stuff going on, what's going on in their town, when they're seeing all this Freemasonic crap or the Satanic crap in their stores, stuff that I would never see that people are sharing. So you could do that as well. And of course, you get exclusive uncensored content over there, which is also worth joining, as well as my library of videos that I've uploaded over there. You can spend hours just watching that if you want to, but I don't know who would want to listen to me for hours on end every day. That would make me sick, so I'm sure it would make you sick. But please check out the website if you haven't, and sub to my backup channel now. I thank you guys for being here. Hope you're doing well. God bless all of you, as always, and your families.